Hey guys, how's it going? Today we have several fun things to work on out here in the Hartley. It is an overcast gray day, snow floor, perfect day to be working with plants. So we're gonna be grooming everything in here, fertilizing, I'll talk through all of that. I also wanna share kind of the learning curve that it has been keeping plants in here. This is our first winter uh, with plants in here. With the heating system, we have had to add an extra floor heater uh, and we didn't realize that until, you know, it got really cold. It's just, you know, we're learning here and the plants, thankfully most of them are sticking it out with us. I honestly feel like well, maybe I should move, maybe I should have moved the plants into the studio. I had a thermometer out here and really monitored everything before I, you know, had plants. Anyway, we'll talk through that. But the first thing I want to do is a stack that's sitting right in front of me. In this stack, we have a box from Little Prince. Live plants. I don't know what's in here. I'm excited about it. But we also have a package from Baker Creek. Uh, I ordered some things after I did my seed inventory, some holes I wanted to make sure to fill. I also picked up a few packets of things down at the garden center that I'll show you. Gardener Supply sent out a hook. The last time we did an unboxing in here, Gardener Supply had sent out those bird cage, hanging bird cage planter set, set of two. One of them came without a hook on the top, so I was un unable to hang it. They sent this right out. So I don't have the planters out here anymore, but it was just in my stack to go from the house to somewhere out here. So I'll make sure this gets to the barn. The next thing, oh, look at these, you guys. My mom picked these up and surprised me with them, specifically for the Hartley tree. Because when she came to help me decorate, it was a really fun afternoon. I uh, did have a few green ornaments right here and here. So when she saw these, she thought it would be a really fun addition. Now they came as a kind of garland. We're gonna cut the ribbon off. I brought some wire and we're gonna hang these on the tree. But that was a really sweet surprise gift from her. But I wanna get into this box of plants first. Goodness. Oh, oh, that is gorgeous. Oh, look at how gorgeous these are. Now, this one, seeing some blooms, big blooms and big color right now when this is what it's like outside. Oh my goodness, what a treat. This is a streptocarpus or a Cape Primrose called Lady Slippers, blue with white center. And so, so gorgeous. They bloom for a super duper long time. I've just cut mine back in the uh, studio. You guys know that I let the studio go a couple weeks without water, right? <laughs> So I recently did it organizing, uh, organizing the studio slash watering and hoping that my plants bounce sort of project. And I shared that with you. Anyway, hopefully they bounce. It's hard to choose favorites, but you know, obviously with the color, that's gorgeous. Uh, staghorn fern. These are just so easy to take care of and they've got such a really interesting texture and color. That's a really nice looking one. Maybe we can mount this. And then we've got a, is it cordyline or cordyline? I'm not sure how to pronounce that exactly, but this one's called kiwi. And look at that beautiful bright color. The variegation is awesome. The yellow, the dark green, the pink, and then there's a little bit of cream in there. This one, it says, grows about one and a half to two feet tall. That's beautiful. And then we've got a Diffenbachia or dumb cane is the common name. This one's called reflector. Isn't that cool? Oh, it's almost like kind of, what, like caladium mask. But you've got the yellow variegation and the deep green. That'll be a fun one. And then a goldfish plant, which, you know, look at those cute blooms. I've got one in the studio, but it's not in bloom right now. Oh, so, so fun. It's so funny, you guys. The last time we did an unboxing from Little Prince, it hasn't been that long since we did it, uh, but they sent out a pink princess philodendron. And me, in my houseplant variety ignorance, I was just like, oh, look at this pretty plant with the pink variegation. Moved on to the next one. I didn't even realize how sought after that plant is. So it's so fun to have that as part of our collection. And that might be one, because it's in here, that might be one that I move into the studio where we have very steady temperatures uh, because I'm still kind of
kind of trying to learn the system out here and how to keep everything happy. It's doing well so far. I'll show it to you in a minute. But anyway, so fun to get those sorts of plants. They really do have some really interesting plants. Um, and this is a really fun collection. So thank you, Little Prince, for sending out plants. Once again, they heat pack these. So at the bottom of each one of these plants, in the box, there was a heat pack right underneath it. Um, so they can send them even in the winter. I mean, you saw what it looks like outside right now. And we have temperatures in the teens. Um, at the moment, the low teens are our lows. So anyway, they shipped just perfectly. And we'll link their website down below if you guys wanna check it out. But for now, I'm gonna move these aside and we're gonna grab the seeds and run through those really quick. Okay, so the first seeds are those from my parents' garden center. These are from Botanical Interests. And they recently refilled their seed racks, like maybe in the, within the last month. So there's a bunch of fun varieties. But this is the first one, Utrecht Blue Wheat. Isn't that gorgeous? I did Google it because I would prefer seeing, I mean, these are pretty pictures on the seed packet and I know it's a whole vibe, a whole look, but I like to see what they really look like in like true form. And they are like a very steel blue color. And I thought it would be fun, even though we have that big section of wheat planted out in our garden that will give us kind of the standard looking wheat for, to use in decorating projects. Um, I thought it would be fun to have this one to try out. So I did get four packets of it. I'm not sure, let's see, there's five grams. I don't know what that means seed wise. But you know, there's like that many seeds at the bottom there, but it'll be a fun one to try out. We're supposed to sow this outside two to four weeks after our average last frost date, which means we'll probably be planting this late May. And then I got a few zinnias because, you know, giant purple, mazurkia. That's really cool. It's, they say it's like strawberries with whipped cream and senora right there big, beautiful three to five inch pink flowers on this one. And from Baker Creek, I gotta open this first. Okay, I think these are a lot of repeats though, so let me just uh, organize quick. Oh, we got some freebies. Okay, so these are the ones, they always send free gift seeds with your order. We've got spoon tomatoes, which I grew last year, and St. Valerie carrots, which I've never heard of. 10 to 12 inch roots, smooth, sweet, and tender. An old French variety, that'll be fun. So when I got on their website, it was to order basically two varieties of zinnias that I really wanted to regrow this year. One of which is Pink Senorita. This was one of my favorite zinnia varieties out there this last year. And I know they look kind of wild, but there was something so I mean, the color was perfection, and there was something just so beautiful and free about the structure of the flower, rather than, you know, a lot of zinnias like the, the giant purples that I just showed you, they're a little bit more of a tight kind of ball shape. This one's got a little bit more movement to it, and I just enjoyed this one so much. And this is gonna surprise you, but I also enjoyed this one a ton. That's a Redmond, Redmond Super Cactus bright red and it kind of um, goes toward the orange side of things uh, but in the cut flower garden I tend to like a lot of reds and oranges and things like that I love to make arrangements in fact I have to it's a stretch for me to make other color of colorful or other color arrangements like if I'm doing an all purple or something like that I just tend to like peaches and reds and those warm late summer fall colors it's, that tends to be the most productive time in the garden anyway when all, all the dahlias are just at peak and everything's looking really good but again this one has that more free structure and I enjoyed it a ton another one that I really liked last year I ordered just about half I think half the amount of seeds as these other two varieties, but this one's called Peruviana. And it looks very bright orange in this picture, but in our soil, maybe it's our soil or maybe it's just the picture, but they were a very smoky, like kind of a brown orange. They were very understated. They weren't like, you know, shocking in color. And they're little flowers, like little button flowers. And they're so, so pretty. A smaller stature to plant. Uh, they grew really, really well. And I just, I really enjoyed that variety. And then a new variety to me is the Zinnia Queenie Lemon Peach. <laughs> Isn't that pretty? It's interesting. It's got kind of the lemon, but also kind of the mustard as you're getting closer to that peachy apricot color. And I thought that would be a really fun one to try. We've got a Cosmo called Double Dutch Rose, super fluffy pink. And you guys, I am considering growing, starting all my zinnias and cosmos in trays in the greenhouse this spring. 
um, because even though we have hoses everywhere out there in the cut flower garden, it is kind of a pain to when we plant a huge long row of seeds to keep them moist enough for them to come up. And we get them, we get it done every year, but you know they come up super duper thick. I never really get around to thinning. That doesn't mean I won't do it the same way. But you know, last summer for our late crop of flowers, I started them in the greenhouse because I'm just more consistent with watering in there. Everything is. Uh, convenient and that's huge I think is keeping things convenient to do otherwise it becomes a chore uh, but I planted out those zinnias and cosmos as little seedlings and I got the perfect spacing the plants were very healthy uh, so I am considering doing that for both our first crop and then the second one that we plant later on okay a hollyhock that's perfection majorette double champagne isn't that Beautiful. I have a whole bunch of hollyhock seeds in my uh, inventory right now. And I think it would be fun to do just like some big old drifts of hollyhocks. I love them. Then we have a butterfly pea called Lavender Queen. Thought that would be a fun one to try. Just got one packet of those. There's 10 seeds in there. And Feverfew White Stars. Now which one is this? This one is a not a frost hardy one, but it often self sows is what it says. Um, and then we'll get a flush of blooms and then if we cut them back, we'll get another flush of blooms. But Feverfew is a wonderful filler flower. Um, I've grown a few other varieties and I plan to just kind of add to that because I find myself using these a lot. It's kind of interesting as you plant more and more things um, out it's interesting to see what you actually use. And that's why like, I've gone way down in the amount of gomfrina that I plant. I just don't use it as much as I use other things. Um, even like I plant mignonette, but I find that I often don't make it in time to get the blooms at their peak. So I'll probably plant a little bit less of that and maybe a little bit more of something else that kind of looks sim similar. So, oh, one more. Okay, this is a random one, but buckwheat. So this is one, my parents actually sell this in bulk at their garden center, not this variety though. The types they have, there's white blooming buckwheat, which is what they've got. And then there's, uh, this is Tecane, Tecane Ruby. And there's a rose colored one too. So you can use this as like a grain crop if you want to, or you can use it as something that you grow and you turn back into your soil and add to you know the organic matter in your soil. Uh, or you can use it for cutting like this. So what I think I'm gonna try, and I just got one packet of it and there's 75 seeds in here. I'm just gonna plant a little bit of it and see how it holds in a vase, see how long the stems are. And then I won't probably let it go to, well, maybe. I mean, maybe we'll let it go to grain stage just to see what it's like. Um, they say oftentimes with this one, they use it for like soba noodles. Uh, anyway, they talk about how they plant fields and fields of this color and the rose color and it actually draws people like it's a tourist kind of attraction to see the fields full of this kind of color and I can see why. And you guys, that's it for seeds today. So fun plant haul, fun seed haul. Uh, now we're going to do ornaments. So I'm just going to use a little bit of that floral wire, attach it to each one of the ornaments and we'll just hang them on tree. Oh, I have to add these into my inventory too. So I already added these. I can put these in my bins.
look at how pretty these are in here. And with the orange color as well. Oh, just, I'm so thrilled with how this tree came out. I did leave these candles on on accident and ran the batteries straight out of them. Uh, so I will need to go around if I want those to be lit and uh, replace batteries on most of them. I don't think any of them are still on. Let's double check. Yeah, none of them are turning on, whoops. <laughs> and that's a great example of a time I should have put a reminder in my phone to turn off the candles. I just forgot. You know, the rest of the lights on the tree, they're LED. I never got them hooked up to a timer, so they're on all the time. Most of our lights turn off at 9.30 in the evening, like all of our outdoor lights, but I love seeing this, you know, and I'm up way later than 9.30. Uh, so I like looking out the window and seeing the tree sparkling in here and, you know, just forgot the, the candles. And I probably won't swap batteries at this point because Christmas is just like within the next week. So we'll just enjoy the tree as is until then. It's still drinking too, but I am noticing that the needles are starting to feel a little bit dry. The last thing that we're gonna do in here, which is gonna take me longer than any other thing we did so far, is to groom and fertilize all of these plants. I've got a tiny bit left in this container and then a nice full fresh one right here. This is what I use to fertilize all of the house plants in here. I do have one cactus, three aloe, and a sedum in here, which I could use the cactus food for that. But since there's so few in here, I just hit them with the indoor. They seem to do just fine with that. So I'm gonna get this going. There's a little bit of water left at the bottom of the can from the last time I watered. But what I like to do typically is pour my fertilizer in first and then the water, and then it kind of churns and mixes itself. So we do a half a cap per quart of water. There are four quarts in a gallon. There are two gallons worth of water in this when it's full. So if we do half a cap per quart, which is two teaspoons, then that means we do two caps per gallon, which means we do four caps per two gallons. The nice thing about this fertilizer is you really can't screw it up. So, I mean, it's a slow feed organic, so it doesn't burn things and that's why I like it so much. I'm gonna give it a really good shake. Kinda has a, a minty-ish smell. Okay, so it's left in our last Oh, that was like one teaspoon worth. One. Two. Three. Four. There it goes, churning away. So the temperature in here, like I said, has been a little bit erratic. The mini split isn't keeping up quite as much as you know, you'd hope that it would keep up with this whole thing, but I mean, it's cold outside. It's getting into almost the single digits at this point and we're dealing with a bunch of glass. Uh, we knew it would be a learning curve figuring out what we needed in here. So we did get this heater right here. It's an oil filled electric heater. Does that make sense? I have no experience with these times. It's like a radiant heater and it just puts off just the nicest amount of low gentle heat. It doesn't blow everywhere like the little floor heaters do. It doesn't make a whole bunch of noise either. Anyway, we went and picked this at Pol Polonis. I don't know. You can feel the heat right here and it just kind of fills this area on this side since the mini split is over there it gives a little bit more heat off here. I have a little floor heater in here, which I don't run all the time, but I just ran it because my feet were cold when I was sitting here. <laughs> so I'll turn that off before we leave. And like right now, I can have my coat off, but I need to have a vest in here. Like I need to be layered a little bit and my fingers and toes are cold. Um, so you know that a lot of tropicals and things aren't gonna like that sort of temperature, um, which it's just something to note. You know, it might not be a place where I can keep super heat loving plants in the winter time. It might be a place where I do more cold tolerant stuff. A lot of my herbs, they're doing great in here. My dill, my basil, I'll show you in a minute. The geraniums are doing great. Um, so it's just something where, you know, I may have some of them in the studio where it's more like interior temperatures for the winter. And we have the hardier stuff out here. I did lose a couple of begonias in the process of learning that the heat wasn't keeping up on this side. Um, so now that we have the heater over here, I do have another begonia and it's doing fine. And I'm thankful it wasn't you know, some of the more hard to get, more sought after expensive plants like the Pink Princess. That would have been sad. But let me give you just a little bit of a look. I'm not gonna name every single one of these plants, but every one of them is going to get some fertilizer water today. In this mix of house plants, we do have one rosemary and one oregano. So a couple of the herbs over here, I need to groom on the oregano a little bit, cut it back. It's got some kind of burned ends there. 
Other than that, we've just got a bunch of beautiful stuff. You know, the fern that I usually kill these ferns, it's put on a ton of new growth in the center. So I'm gonna clip off some of this old raggedy, ratty stuff on the edges and leave all this beautiful stuff. We've got ficus and strawberry begonia ferns. This one, what is this? A red, lucky red, Chinese evergreen. We have a marble syngonium right here. There's the pink princess. It's doing really well. It's actually pushed, pushed a couple new leaves. The bromeliad, alocasia. There's the pandora ficus. That's another one little print sent out, a kind of an unusual one. We've got a uh, Hoya right here. There's the begonia. So this one's doing great. It's looking really good. I'm thankful for that. We do have some peperomia. This right here is Pink Lady Calicia. And then we've got the Rex begonia vine. It's doing great. It's put on so much growth. We've got a Pegasus begonia. We've had these for several seasons at this point. They lived in a window box for a while. And then I pulled them out and they lived in containers in the greenhouse last winter. I need to groom it, that sort of business, but it's doing well. Over here, we have a Tratoscantia looking amazing. I think it's the, like super colorful and super saturated because it gets a ton of light right here. And it's been cold in here, like right sitting right here. It's pretty chilly. Um, we've got the Amaryllis that Gardner sent out recently. I can see growth in there, but they haven't put on a lot of active growth yet. Then we've got a dill, poor dill plant. It's starting to wilt. This is my biggest baby in the entire greenhouse. It has to have water every single day, but it's looking so pretty and it smells amazing. We've also got mint here. Spearmint, it smells so good. Basil looks pretty good. I need to cut off the blooms there. Uh, we've got wire vine, more triascantia. There's a pineapple plant that looks pretty crummy. I think that it might, this might've happened when it was cold. I don't know. There's a cactus here that I've had for at least, I don't know, 13, 14 years. And then a chef Lara looking amazing, putting on new growth all over the top. And then on this table, we have grape ivy, which is putting on new growth since we repotted it. We've got some aloe. We've got pink geraniums that came out of the chicken coop window box looking pretty with the blooms, but I do need to groom them. Got some blooms falling off. Um, one of the begonias that looks pretty crummy uh, still has some leaves, still looking okay, but not, you know, not the best. And then I had a big begonia in here that I cut it back, so we'll see what happens. I'm gonna go ahead and fertilize it today, we'll, we'll see. We've got some ferns here, and there's a thyme plant right there. And then on this end, we don't have as much going on, but I've got an ivy we recently brought in here. Beautiful, look at this. <gasps> Oh, that makes me so happy to see. That's another one from the chicken coop window box right there. Put on, has put on growth and blooms. Here's our fern. What's the variety name? Crocodile fern. Then we've got a philodendron down here, which was all cuttings. It was a great big plant that was unruly. And so I cut all the leaves off and stuck them in the soil and it's pushing new leaves. It's awesome. The tops don't look that great because these are the old leaves but I'm leaving them there just so that they can gather up some sunshine and create some energy here um, so that they create more new growth. And then we've got a fig. So that's what we've got in the way of houseplants in here at the moment. The ones we unbox today, I'll probably take straight to the studio uh, and pot them up in there. That's where the bulk of my supplies and pots and things are anyway. And I'll be monitoring the temperature in here pretty closely uh, because like right now it's 18 degrees outside. And I just, I want it to make sure, I want to make sure that it keeps up enough not to freeze in here or to get close, to, even close to freezing. If we can keep it above 40, preferably around 50 in here, that would be amazing. I just don't know how hard it's gonna be to do that. So it might be a situation where I end up moving a bunch of stuff. So that is possible. I'm gearing myself up for it mentally. But in the meantime, let's get everything fertilized today.
all done and I'm honestly pretty happy with how things look. A couple of them look a little puny because of the cold, because of how cold it got in here. But I did turn the temperature of the thermostat up by two degrees and I'm noticing a very definite change. I'm starting to feel comfortable myself. Maybe it's because I was moving around more too, uh, but it definitely feels more comfortable in here. So it's just gonna have to be trying to find that line between what's sustainable. Like I don't wanna heat this thing to tropical level heat because I think that that would take an enormous amount. Uh, well, I mean, we'd have to just kick the heat up so high in here and I, I don't really wanna use it like that. Uh, so yeah, like I said, we might move some stuff around, who knows. I did decide to leave the brand new plants in here since it's warming up in here and I don't really wanna truck them over to the studio when it's 18 degrees outside. We'll wait until it warms up a little bit to do that. So things have been fertilized, they've been groomed. The most severe groom job I did was on the pineapple. <laughs> I took away pretty much all the leaves that had damage on them, um, hoping that the plant will send energy into all this brand new growth at the base. Should be all right. Here's all of the new babies right here. Oh, I forgot to do this one. I forgot to groom it. Hang on, let's get that done. Oh, geez, that's so pretty. Doesn't that just look like spring? And you can see all the tattery growth has a lighter color too. I'm just gonna pop all that off. <gasps> Accidentally popped one out. I'm going to replant it quick. <laughs> Whoops. Should be okay. That looks pretty good. All of the plants on these shelves here looked pretty darn good. Uh, the Hoya, a little bit stressed, but I think it just got too cold. I think it'll be okay. Did a pretty major groom job on the begonia. Um, usually when you have those cold temperatures, they start to get more kind of translucent, you know, like you can kind of see it in this leaf versus like one of these more fresh leaves at the top, but overall pretty good. There's a bunch of new growth at the bottom in the interior. I didn't have to do any grooming on these plants. That was really nice. Just gave them a good deep water with the fertilizer in it. And the happiest thing is that I didn't find any bugs. Zero bugs, no mites, no aphids, no mealybugs, nothing. And when you have a time where you go through all your plants and you don't find that, that's, that's a pretty good day. I've been pretty careful about everything that we put in here, even the brand new plants that I get. And I, I recommend to like check them at any garden center, wherever you're getting them, double check that they don't have bugs before you bring them in because sometimes bugs happen and they don't catch it before they leave, you know, leave their doors. And you don't wanna introduce that kind of thing into your space. Cause some of them, especially spider mites are incredibly hard to eradicate. Anyway, that is it for today's projects. So I just thought it would be fun to be out here for part of the day working and just kind of enjoying the process. You know, during the summer, we're just so busy, flying busy that I just come in here, take care of things really quick and, you know, go on to the next project. But this time of year, we really get to enjoy the space and go slow and really give attention to everything, which is so, so nice. Kind of a regrouping time. But you know, these plants, a lot of these, I don't wanna say most of them, but a lot of them, uh, were in here for the summer months and they flourished. I did have to have the south shades pulled, just the south ones because that's where the sun kind of was in the sky. Um, so I had those pulled all summer so it shaded a good portion of the interior here. But the plants, like this structure was made for growing plants in the spring, summer, fall. I mean, everything just boomed with growth and just looked so healthy. And now we're getting into that time where we're just gonna have to kind of play it by ear. So I'll keep you posted on all of that. And we will link uh, both Little Prince and uh, Baker Creek down below if you're interested in looking at any of the things that I unboxed today. Other than that, I hope you guys are having a great day and we will see you in the next video. Bye.